is the headquarters of Bell Brothers, contractors at large. The company's interests are widespread and diverse, with divisions specializing in transport, quarrying, asphalt and bitumen, tire distribution, crane hire, and steel piping products. Throughout Australia and overseas, there are more than 1,400 people on the payroll. Pinjarra, a township 90 kilometers south of Perth, with a population of 2,000, is the center of one of the largest alumina processing projects in the world. In the five years that Alcoa have been at Pinjarra, the world has shown an increasing appetite for aluminium products. To meet this demand, substantial extensions have been and are being made at the refinery to boost production. That's where Bell Brothers, the biggest heavy machinery and earth-moving conglomerate in the southern hemisphere come in. For more than 40 years now, Bells, the red and white, have been helping to change and reshape the face of Western Australia. This particular piece of reshaping is for a mud lake, Alcoa's fifth, all of them constructed by Bell Brothers. It's hardly a spectacular or eye-catching project, like a dam or a freeway construction, but it is a vital part of the operation of the alumina plant and the protection of our environment. The mud lake serves two purposes, ecological and the recycling of waste from the refinery. The lake ensures that no harmful material leaves the refinery site and reusable liquids can be recycled. It operates like this. The lake has a built-in slope so that when the waste solution is pumped in from the refinery, the liquid flows to one corner. Unusable gravel and mud fall out on the way, leaving a reservoir of reusable liquid which is pumped back into the refinery. On the face of it, simply gouging out a giant hole in the ground, levelling the bottom and building up the sides would seem to be a simple enough job. In fact, it's a great deal more complicated than that. It's a highly skilled technical operation, requiring skilled engineering techniques. The major requirement is that the whole lake has to be impervious to ensure that no harmful liquids escape into the soil. This is achieved wholly through the use of on-site materials. The top layer of sand, the clay underneath. Together, they are compressed into an impenetrable barrier. Powerful as their own engines are, the hungry scrapers work even more effectively with the added pushing power behind, filling their bellies to overflowing. Up on the dike wall, tip men ensure that the scrapers spread their gigantic load evenly over the surface. The floor of the lake and the core of the dike wall are of clay, compacted so that no liquid can seep through. Sand is packed on either side of the centre core to give more strength, and then more clay is placed on the inside wall and on top to complete the waterproof blanket. At every stage, the soil is compacted and the clay tested for water content to ensure that it is fusing into a solid shield.
Ultimately, this massive 400 acre expanse will hold about 45 million cubic yards of waste solution from the refinery. For this, the entire ground level has to be lowered some three meters. The dike walls will rise to 25 meters. In all, some five million cubic yards of material must be rearranged at the rate of a million yards a month. It's a jolting, dusty, arduous operation with several different phases of the work carried out simultaneously. Each machine has its special role. First, the topsoil, the spoil, is removed. That's to be used later to dress the finished sides of the dike. The exposed sand underneath is then taken out to line the dike walls. This reveals the clay, the essential building material for the lake's construction. The work is systematically programmed. The lake floor is excavated in a series of pits known as borrow pits. From these, sand and clay are borrowed to form the dike wall. Nudged along by even more powerful bulldozers, the giant earth movers scrape up the lake floor and deposit it on the wall in a continuous operation. As one pit drops to the required level, a new one is begun. As the sides rise, other bulldozers put the finishing touches to the inner wall. Crawling over the surface at increasingly alarming angles, it's their job to ensure that the final clay blanket maintains the correct degree of slope. The dust is a constant companion here, despite the measures to control it. Too much water would make the soil heavy and unworkable. At every stage, a close watch is kept on the progress of the project. The gradient and depth of the lake and the height of the walls must all conform to specifications and surveyor Ben Ewing and a project engineer David Price must constantly check the measurements and angles. Moving soil from one place to another is only half the operation. It must also be compressed and that's a task of the highly mobile 835 sheep's foot compactors. It's hard, unrelenting work for 22 hours a day. Night brings no rest. As darkness falls, the rush of activity roars on under floodlights to keep the project up to schedule. And there's another reason. On the site is a formidable investment in heavy machinery. It must be worked to capacity to justify the enormous expense. By day, men and machines roast in the searing heat. At night, as the thermometer drops, they have a new adversary, the cold. An operation like this demands a tough breed of machine and tough men to operate them. This is the most powerful monster on the site, the Huff D500, a rubber-tired pushdozer. It gives a 700 horsepower boost to the heavy earth movers, scooping up 25 ton mouthfuls of clay. If the work is hard on the men who operate these thundering giants, it's even more grueling on the machines themselves. They have double the workload. As one crew completes its sweaty 11-hour shift and goes home to rest, another is waiting to move into the driving seat. It's for this reason that the maintenance section plays a vital role in the whole operation. Time and money are at stake for every minute that one of these machines stands longer than necessary. Tires, which take a massive pounding on every journey, are watched especially closely. Pressures must be just right. If the pressure is too soft, the machine bounces. The tires flex, generate heat, and are liable to explode. If the pressure is too great, machines vibrate and run the danger of shaking themselves to pieces. Just to replace one of these tires would cost in the region of $4,000. Each tire on the Huff D500 weighs around eight and a half tons. Six tons of that is lead dust to give great attraction. And with the lead dust at 25 cents a pound, that's nearly $3,000 worth in each tire. The maintenance team of five mechanics and five greasers is led by George Martinich and Con Baisdorfer. Every ship mobile crews go out to service each machine on site, checking water levels, air pressures, fluid, and lubricants. 
It's a tribute to the drivers, the machines, and those who maintain them that the pace of the operation hasn't been allowed to flag. Work is well ahead of schedule. It's a tribute, too, to the organizers and planners behind the scenes, led by operations controller Harry Brenton, in overall charge of the construction. But Bell Brothers are far more than just earth movers. This Ruston Bucyrus super crane is the largest hire crane in Western Australia. It's capable of lifting a mammoth 101 tons and has a maximum boom and jib combination of 220 feet. And Bell Brothers are also the agents for Michelin tyres in Western Australia, the Northern Territory and Queensland. The band dagging and retreading plant is the largest such complex in the state specialising in giant earth mover tyres. The familiar red and white colours are also flown by a fleet of 40 agitator trucks from the Bell Creek subsidiary. If it's over length, over width and over weight, Bells will move it throughout Australia. And if the load is a more conventional size, Bells will take that too, aboard the National Transport Division, Bell Freight Lines. For the state on the move, Bell Brothers are helping to keep it that way.